with Kelly and she's going to tell me all about the bees and the honey and everything. Kelly, would you introduce yourself to for my viewers? Sure. My name's Kelly Lees and I'm from Urban Hum, an urban beekeeping business in Newcastle, New South Wales. Wow. And I, I'm sure you can see that I look like a really, you know, like a scarecrow of sorts with a veil here and a button-up shirt and everything and I look like a freak. But that's going to save me from the bees just in case they plan to sting me. And I think we're going to have a good time today with Kelly. Let's watch on. It suppresses the alarm pheromone that the guards give off. And so they don't send out a smell that tells everybody the hive is under attack. So this is a small nucleus colony that I'm putting into a bigger box. So I'm just going to put a bit of smoke in the entrance to let them know that I'm opening the hive. So this was a small swarm that is now outgrown the box. So this is a hive tool which you just use to separate the frames. Now you can see they're pretty calm. You guys can come closer if you want. Um, they're not really bothered by me. They're just doing their thing. So these are really nice quiet bees. You can see we call that quiet on the comb. So they're not really wandering around too much. The capped sections here of wax are actually young bees that haven't hatched yet. And I'll just have a look and see if the queen's on this frame. So that little beetle there, that's a hive beetle. So we've got to give that a squash. So I don't think the queen's on there. So I'm going to pop this frame into their bigger box because they can quickly outgrow the smaller boxes. They're not really bothered by me or yeah, you guys. They're not, are they? No, and this is this is pretty normal. This is how oh, wow, bees behave. Delicious. So this is a very strong colony. Bees live about six weeks. So oh, wow. they work really, really hard. Let's see if she's on there. Can't see her on there. Very this is a very healthy there she is, there's the queen. Oh. Okay. The queen. Oh, Can you talk right. Oh. Yep, right there. Can you see her? Yeah. She's beautiful. She's a beauty. All her legs are working. Uh, she's moving across the comb really nicely. She's not in a hurry. She's very healthy. She looks great. So you have a queen for each each hive has a queen in it. Yeah. Tw Twenty-one days the eggs take to hatch the worker eggs. Queen eggs take 16 days from uh, egg to adult and drones, which are the male bees, take 24 days. So slightly different. <laughs> oh, you just gotta God. tip them in. Yep, you just tip them in. So, because the queen's in there, so they'll fly in eventually and what I'll do is I'll leave that there. I'm loving feeling impervious to them. Yeah, so well that's it. I mean, I'm they're just... Yep, so I'm just gonna slide this back because they're a little bit confused. You're not gonna bite me. Nope, they're really not. But that'll settle down eventually. Um, once they figure out, oh, we've got a bigger box, yeah. new home. Sometimes they'll let them into a different hive if they have a full load of pollen or nectar. So if they come bearing gifts, they let them in. But the guards, what they do is chew all their hair off first. We're not really sure why they do it. We think it might be that the hairs carry the scent from the hive. So in removing the hair, they remove the smell of the other hive. But it's unusual. Usually they'll only go to their hive. So you can actually take, you can take frames from one colony and put them in another. Um, as long as you brush off the adult bees. If you put the adult bees in another colony, they, they'll kill them. Okay. So they, they, they'll sting them to death uh, because they don't belong. But if you put brood in there, so the bees. adult bees that haven't emerged uh, and they hatch inside that hive, they're accepted. Okay. Yeah, mm. so they, they're happy if they hatch out in there, but if you accidentally put any adults in, mm. they're, they're gone. So this is the second hive? Yes. So this is a nucleus box, so it's just a wooden one. And what's the difference? Uh, these ones are made out of core flute, so they come flat packed and you just fold them up. This is just a timber one. So this colony is very small. Uh, and I'm hoping they survive, but the numbers are quite low, so they may not. Now, I don't know if you can see along the bottom of that frame. Yeah, so these guys have got a little bit of food. So this is how they generally pattern the hive. Um, they put an arc of brood in the centre, 
and then they put the and honey worker egg can become a queen. It's just okay. down to what um, the workers feed that particular egg. So oh, if they, they appoint a queen, how, how does no, so they, they so they've got quite a few queen cells. Here's another couple here. So that's mm. that's quite a big one. Yeah. So they always raise more than one. Um, they can't do without a queen, so they've got to have a queen. Um, they just pick a random selection of eggs of a certain age. Are you going to make honey out of it? Uh, the honey's already made. The bees have done it. We are going to extract it though. You're all going to have a go at that. No risk of being stung. Ooh, okay. A frame of honey. So, Lovely. Oh, yep. it's beautiful. It is, together. So they go out the hole. They can get out that tiny hole. And they squeeze out of there. Okay, yeah, right. so they squeeze out through yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Now, they can fit back up if they want to, but it's a bit of a squeeze. Yeah. So they generally don't. They generally just exit the board, uh, and then in the morning they find that they can't really get back up into the box, so it empties the bees out. It's just an easy way. Mm -hmm. You kill less bees yeah. harvesting the honey this way, um, just because it empties them out. So I'm just going to shake them off for you. Yeah, so you can see that's the difference when you don't clear it out, is that there's the box is full of bees. Uh, okay. Yeah, so if I wanted to harvest this, I'd have to shake all the frames, yeah. um, which is just more disturbing for them. So, yes, so the bees can't get in. They can't kill the beetle either, though. So what they do is they chase them around the hive, and the beetles look for somewhere to hide. This has very small holes in it. The beetles go, oh, well, there's a hole. I'll go in there, and there's vegetable oil in here. So they go in and they drown. It's not raw honey anymore, so I just do it by hand. Yep. And stand around here. You know, you have a side preference yes. how you work. So um, I, I decap up. Some people decap down. It doesn't really matter how you do it. But um, So you just run the knife along, cutting off the wax capping. To expose the honey. Beautiful. And then you just do both sides. That's why I've got the cardboard down because wow. it's a messy job. It's, yeah, so the cappings, so this happens to all your honey that you buy someone they either decap it by hand or do it in a decapping machine. This is just a three frame extractor. So what I, what I do is I, um, I decap lots of honey uh, and I let it drain and then the bucket eventually gets full. You hold, hold the extractor and spin with one hand. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's pretty easy though. So. Hold the extractor. Yep, but not just over here. So not, yeah, so you don't, yep. And give it a whip. That's it. Let it pick up speed. You can hear the honey flying out. Okay, that's it. Let it go. And so, because it's a centrifuge and it's got a bearing, it'll just keep going. Wow. That's cool. It is cool. And the honey is ready, and that's the DB, and I'm queen. <laughs> So that'll slow down, the honey will be out of that side and then we turn the frames around and do it again mm -hmm. to get the honey out of the other side. Now, now, you press the knife against the timber, so you've got to press down quite firmly, so, but sideways, so kind of cut up. That's it. I'll hold the bucket for you, perfect. Oh my God, I'm not very good at this. No, you're doing surprisingly well. It's actually quite difficult. So this was after the spinning. Yes, so you can see that that side's been emptied out now um, compared to the other side, which is still full of honey. Oh. So now we spin it round and go the other way. This reminds me of um, a leopard thinner. And basically I put these back in the hive. Now when you put one back in the hive, within 24 hours the bees have trimmed it completely and cleaned it up. They gather up all of the stray honey from the comb and they put it in one corner and cap it ready to go so the hot the comb then is ready to fill with honey again so that's getting hard to spin because it's, it's heavy sticky no the honey is um heavy so what we'll do there's a lot of honey in it there it's going to, going to pour out from yep, the bottom so pour it into here ah right let's strain it wow 
Gosh, it's so manual, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> it's not straining very fast. Oh, okay. It takes a little while to build up um, enough weight to pass through the strainer. Mm. Uh, any myths about beekeeping or bees would, that you would know of? Yes, I think the, the, the most pervasive myth about bees is that they're dangerous. Um, lots of people are scared of bees and um, as long as you leave them alone and let them get on with their job, they're not dangerous at all. Having said that, in America they do have Africanized bees, which are, can be slightly more aggressive than European honeybees, which is what we have in Australia. But bees are generally uh, focused on their job and they're not really that interested in us. Most people get stung accidentally by stepping or sitting on them. Um, you've got beehives all through lots of urban areas and you've got bees in your garden all the time. Um, your chances of getting stung are pretty low. Have you ever been bitten by bees? I've never been bitten by a bee, but I have been stung by a bee. People often say, have you been bitten by a bee? They don't bite. Um, they do stink. Yes, look, it's a hazard of the job. Um, you know, your average beehive's got between 50 and 100,000 bees in it. The chances of me getting stung because there are so many are quite high, but usually it's accidental. They get caught in my clothing or I accidentally squash one with my hand because I don't wear gloves. Yes, it is. The venom sacs actually attach to part of their digestive tract. So when the stinger gets stuck in your skin, it pulls out the venom sac and it actually pulls out part of their um, internal organs as well. So the best thing you can do if you get stung by a bee, apart from getting the stinger out of your skin, is actually to put the bee out of its misery because it's a very slow death for the bee when it stings you. It can take a couple of days to die, so you're best to squash it. What's the lifespan of bees? Okay, so your average worker bee lives about six weeks in spring and summer. So she takes three weeks to hatch from an egg to an adult and then she lives for about six weeks. Uh, in winter she can live a little bit longer because she doesn't work as hard. And uh, do you enjoy this job? Is there anything you don't like about this job? Look, I love just about every aspect of the job. I love bees, I love talking about bees, I love working outside. I love extracting honey. The one thing I don't like is being sticky, which is uh, an unfortunate side effect of the job. So I spend a lot of my time sticky and I'm constantly washing my hands because I'm always sticky. Mm -hmm.